Hi, about two weeks ago I finished work on this force extension machine and since then I have been using it to investigate the phenomenon of creep in PLA. Now creep is a process where if you apply a force to a material and you keep that force applied for a long period of time that material will deform permanently and if you at a very much later time you remove that force the material does not spring back to its original shape. The deformation really is permanent. To better show you the phenomenon and how I investigated it, I've loaded a sample of PLA in the machine. And what the machine will do in a moment is it will cause this horizontal piece called the crosshead to move upwards by use of these two stepper motors over here. And as it does so, it will apply a force to this sample. That force is recorded by this load cell. And what will happen is that the force will rise to a predetermined level that I have set in the software. And once it reaches that level, the motors will stop. And what you'll see at that point is that even though there is no movement occurring, there is still a steadily decreasing force over time. Okay, uh, so let's start the test. So you can see that the crosshead is moving up, and now that the backlash has been taken up, the force is starting to increase. So we've reached a thousand newtons and the crosshead has stopped, and you can see that almost immediately the force measured by the load cell is starting to decrease. And this is because the sample here is starting to creep. Having hopefully adequately explained what creep is and how I investigated it, I would like to go over to the computer now to show you the data that I have collected. I'd like to start out by showing you all of the data I have collected for this video. It's a bit messy, but I'll clean that up in a minute. On the vertical axis of this graph, we have the stress in megapascals. Now, stress is merely the force applied to the sample divided by the cross-sectional area of that sample. So that would be force in newtons divided by the area in square meters. And a different word for newton per square meter is simply Pascal. And on the horizontal axis, we have time. Remember that we put the crosshead in a certain position uh, if the threshold force is, force is reached. And then we simply wait and see how the force develops over time. Uh, what I want to draw your attention to first are these uh, four outliers in the data. Uh, now what's happening here is that the chip that reads the force sensor has to communicate the results to the main computer, which is a Raspberry Pi. And I've tried very hard to make that communication go perfectly, uh, but as you can see, I was not quite successful in this respect. Um, I should point out that the force is sampled more than 80 times per second. So every line that you see here uh, represents over a million points of data and all of the lines put together uh, consist of over 18 million points of data. And out of those 18 million, uh, four have failed. Uh, so I wrote a small bit of Python to uh, eliminate these outliers, uh, which you can see in the code down below. Uh, and that cleans up everything pretty nicely. It's still a bit busy, uh, so I'd like to remove some of the graphs now uh, to make everything a bit more readable. Um, what we start out with is simply the initial forces, the initial stresses rather, of 5 to 45 megapascals. Um, and what we see here is nice. It's quite uh, regular, there's no strange things happening. And there are two things really that stand out to me. Uh, one is that every test appears to start with uh, an exponential decay. Uh, and as time goes on, that um, eventually turns into a linear decay, uh, especially if you look at the uh, graph for the 45 megapascal initial load, uh, you'll see that even after four hours, the force is still decaying. Um, going further now to 50 megapascals, we see something new, which is that uh, the lines start to intersect, which is why also the initial picture was so messy. Uh, so going one step back, you see that every line uh, is strictly above the other lines. So if you start at a higher initial load, 
you will always be at a higher load no matter where you are in the experiment but the 50 megapascal sample breaks with that trend uh, so you see now that the creeping is starting to become really severe uh, going further to 55 megapascals this effect gets even worse uh, as you can see now that dips below the 50 megapascal sample quite quickly and then also through the 40 and 45 and 35 megapascal samples uh, naturally i tried to uh, test a 60 megapascal sample uh, but that sample broke uh, before the 60 megapascal was reached uh, pla was simply not strong enough to hold that so i obviously tried the next best thing which is uh, 75 and a half megapascals and this is another really interesting experiment uh, but all the action happens at the start basically so let's zoom in on that um, so what we see here is all the same experiments of the last graph except the time axis is now shrunk to the first 100 seconds uh, and looking in particular at the uh, highest stress uh, experiment here uh, the 75 and a half megapascal experiment uh, we see that after about 37 seconds the sample snaps and this is a really interesting result remember the crosshead and the bottom end of the machine are both stationary there is no movement whatsoever and yet out of seemingly nowhere snaps um, another thing you can see which is even more interesting perhaps is if you focus on the area the time right before the snapping actually occurs and let's zoom in on that real deep what you see here is initially the normal creeping in the linear part of the graph right around this area uh, but the time right before the actual snapping event you see that the creeping starts to accelerate there's a sort of foreshadowing already there of the snap that is just about to occur at that time um, so that's the main result of the experiments that i've done um, so now I'd like to show you a few more graphs uh, to, sh to try to establish the validity of everything that I've shown so far. Uh, so first, this is um, running the same experiment twice and seeing if you get the same result. Uh, so in this case, I have loaded two samples, both to 25 megapascals and uh, compared their graphs, which is what you can see here. Uh, and we see that indeed when you do the same thing twice you also get the same result which is very encouraging uh, you should note here that the stress axis the vertical axis does not start at zero anymore uh, which tends to exaggerate the differences between the graphs um, moving on we have a different uh, experiment uh, in this case uh, the blue line is a sample of 20 square millimeters and the orange line represents a sample of 100 square millimeters it's the same sample it's just five times thicker that's all that is um, and what you what i'm trying to show here is that the creep that we have seen in the graph so far is really a phenomenon in the sample and it is not an artifact of my machine um, so the samples both of these samples are subject to the same amount of stress at least initially that 10 megapascals but in one case the machine applies uh, a much lower force than in the other case the orange line uh, the machine has to apply five times more force than for the blue line so if any type of creeping or other effects are happening inside the machine we would expect that to be far worse for the orange line because the machine is suffering from five times the force at that time um, luckily that's not what we see which implies that the results that we've seen are not um, an artifact of the machine or of the experiment the results that we've seen so far yeah, are real um, the interesting thing though is that the thicker sample um, actually creeps less than the thinner sample 
Uh, and this isn't something that I don't quite understand. Uh, this could either be because of edge effects, where the first few layers of the sample that has been printed and the last few layers of the sample as printed um, don't contribute quite as much to the strength of the material. And the other possibility I see is that there may be inhomogeneities in the material due to the fact that it's printed. And those inhomogeneities weaken the sample, but that effect is stronger if the sample is very thin. Um, I've done the same thing for an initial stress of 30 megapascals. Um, again, with the blue sample being five times thinner uh, than the orange sample in this case. Um, and luckily, again, we see the same results. And as before, the difference between the two graphs is a little bit exaggerated, perhaps, because the y-axis does not start at zero. What you can also see, again, quite clearly in this graph, if you look towards the end of the experiment, uh, you can see that uh, the, the decay of the force at that time has not stopped. Um, in this data, I cannot see any asymptote towards which the, for the stress is trending. Uh, so it seems that the decay really is continuing. Uh, and I don't know whether it stops at any point. Um, another interesting thing, if you zoom in again on the very start of this experiment, uh, is that you see the orange line now, which is the 100 square millimeter sample. Uh, and you can see that the machine really struggles in applying that force. Um, there's a lot of friction in, the machine, in a machine like this. Um, there's no real way of getting around that. Uh, however, what you can see here quite clearly is that I have been delinquent in lubricating the threads properly. I'm quite confident that if I had lubricated the threads properly, properly, we would not see this poor loading. Um, so the conclusions, um, first, the real basic stuff um, is that creep is very clearly demonstrated with these experiments. Uh, and another thing we saw quite clearly is that if you apply a larger amount of stress, uh, then you will also get more creep. Uh, the creep appears to start with an exponential decay, which is consistent with some of the theory I found on the internet. Uh, but after that exponential decay is mostly done, we see a linear trend downwards. At least that's what I see in it. Uh, I should uh, at some point start fitting the, this precise model to the data to see if that statistically holds up. Um, and the last thing that I found really interesting is that the sample can snap, can break, even after it has survived the initial loading. Um, with that, there are a lot of further questions. Like any good science experiments, there are more questions now than answers. Uh, the first thing that I can look into is, is this decay really that exponential plus linear combination trend? Uh, that I uh, suspect it is. Um, to do that, I should write up that model and fit it to the data. Um, the next question is, does this decay of stress ever stop or does it really go all the way to zero? Um, another question is, how much PLA can you apply to, or how much stress can you apply to PLA where that PLA can hold that stress indefinitely? Uh, to test this, I will need to program the machine in a different way uh, with a certain, certain feedback loop to it so that it tries to apply a constant force to a sample. Uh, and then um, you can try to see how the sample deforms over time under a constant load. Uh, an obvious next question is we've now seen the creeping behavior of PLA uh, and Obviously, you, you would ask yourself, well, how does ABS stand up to creep? Or how does ASA, PTG, HIPS, nylon, polycarbonate, and some of the other filaments that you can ordinarily print with, how do they stand up to creep? Um, and perhaps one of the things that you could wonder is, um, does their tendency to creep correlate with the glass transition temperature of these materials? Uh, does it perhaps also um, depend on whether the material is more crystalline or more amorphous? Um, does the tendency of a sample to creep depend on the temperature of that sample? 
um, and finally uh, this uh, the conundrum of these thicker samples that I've shown you uh, is that creeping really less or is there an error in my machine um, and if those thicker samples really do creep less then why is that the case is that because of inhomogeneities in the material is that due to the edge effects where the top and bottom layers uh, don't quite contribute to the strength like the central layers do um, I'm really not sure on any of these questions really um, so I'd like to leave you with that I hope you found that interesting and informative if you did you can hit one of those buttons down below I would like to thank you very much for watching and have a great night